What is up, XRP community? Welcome back to another video. Thank you for joining me. I want to lead with this clip from Tony Fauci as he's trending on Twitter. A lot of people in the crypto space and the XRP community are free thinkers. And I think you'll really enjoy this video from Kim.com. Many times I can say it, Madam Chair, we did not fund gain of function research to be conducted in the Wuhan Institute of Virology. In our health lead, we now know that a bat coronavirus was enhanced in a lab. NIH and NIAID categorically has not funded gain-of-function research to be conducted in the Wuhan Institute. The National Institutes of Health acknowledged that it funded research of a virus that was studied at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. The experiment unexpectedly, we're told, made a bat coronavirus more contagious than the original naturally occurring one. Dr. Fauci, knowing that it is a crime to lie to Congress, do you wish to retract your statement of May 11th where you claimed that the NIH never funded gain-of-function research in Wuhan? Senator Paul, I have never lied before the Congress, and I do not retract that statement. A new letter raising questions about experiments in a Wuhan lab. What so was, let me take, finish. You take an animal virus and you increase its yeah. transmissibility to humans. Right. You're saying that's not gain of function. Yeah, that is correct. And, and Senator Paul, you do not know what you are talking about, quite frankly. And I want to say that officially. You do not know what you are talking about. For years, the National Institutes of Health provided grant money to the EcoHealth Alliance Research Group, which conducted experiments with bat coronaviruses in Wuhan, China. And if anybody is lying here, Senator, it is you. That's where you are getting. Let me finish. We don't know. We well, don't wait know a minute. It did I come from the lab, but you. all the evidence is pointing that it came from the lab. You. And there will be responsibility for those who funded the lab, including yourself. National Institute of Health admitted this week that it funded controversial gain of function research using coronaviruses at a lab in China at the epicenter of the pandemic. Contradicting claims from Dr. Anthony Fauci that American tax dollars never paid for that kind of research. I have not lied before Congress. I have never lied. Certainly not before Congress. Case closed. I thought that was a pretty ironic clip. Whatever you think about that subject matter that I can't say on YouTube. Um, this guy, Tony Fauci, heard this thing from a doctor. And there's tons of doctors out here contradicting what he's saying. But like Sam Bankman fried he'll probably get off scotch-free. Now for a great clip from Brad Garlinghouse at the Ripple Swell Conference. I don't view a lot of these companies as competitors because it's so early that I like, look, we're trying to solve a payments problem and there's people working on securities and identity and lending and I love it. I want all boats to rise and I think that's uh, a good thing. But for us, we're going to invest in the XRP ecosystem or invest in the broader ecosystem. Uh, we certainly want to see XRP become even more liquid. Uh, and I think as we drive adoption, that will happen. You know, this isn't one of the questions, but I want to proactively comment on something. One of the things I say inside the company is I'm not focused on the price of XRP over three days or three weeks or three months. Mm -hmm. I'm focused on the price of XRP over three years and five years. Mm -hmm. I have no qualm saying definitively if we continue to drive the success we're driving, we're going to drive a massive amount of demand for XRP because we're solving a multi-trillion dollar problem. Mm -hmm. These payment flows are obviously very, very large. And to the extent we continue to drive success of signing up more banks, introducing them to how we can solve not just a connectivity question with X current, but a liquidity problem, a multi-trillion dollar problem around liquidity called X rapid. I'm so hundreds of banks use X current. This is Ripple Net software. They don't use XRP, which is X rapid. Now they don't use XRP because legally no bank general counsel, no bank lawyer is going to tell a bank to use a crypto asset without regulation, right? That's why this lawsuit is so important. But in the future, Ripple's already in the door doing business with all these banks. So ideally, once XRP does have that regulatory clarity, why would these banks not choose to use the service? It frees up capital for them and banks are the business of money. So why would they not want to free up capital? And now for a great clip from Jeremy Hogan, our favorite XRP attorney, giving you the outcomes of the Ripple lawsuit and how it will potentially end. The legal briefs, Ripple versus SEC case predictions. Now, I've read every pleading in this case. I've listened to every single hearing. I've researched every issue. I've read other opinions from Judge Torres just to see how she approaches making a decision. 
I've even conferred with retired federal judges about it. Boy, they hated me. And here is what I think. Here we go. I believe there are four possible outcomes to the Ripple litigation, and because I know you like preciseness, I have given each possibility an exact percentage chance of happening, and I will start with what I think is the most likely outcome, with exactly a 50.1% chance of occurring, and that outcome is, drumroll please. I think there is precisely a 49.56% chance that Ripple wins at summary judgment. A win for Ripple at summary judgment because XRP was not sold as a security. Complete Ripple victory and I think there are two bases for this and possibly a third basis as well. The first basis for why I think Ripple will win and the most likely is that I think Ripple will win because it had no legal obligation to purchasers of XRP after the sale occurred. No post-sale obligations. In other words, there can be no investment contract without an investment contract. Now, I want you to know that I've spoken with other lawyers who believe that Ripple may win on this issue on appeal, on an appeal, but not at the trial court level because it's such a drastic ruling that it kind of smells like it's more appropriate for an appellate court to find this and not a lowly level trial judge. But like I've said, I've read other opinions from Judge Torres and I think she is exactly the type of judge that would make a brave ruling such as this one. And I think Ripple will win on this issue because it is right. I don't think Ripple will win here because the SE didn't respond well or did something wrong. I think Ripple wins on this because it is correct. And in the last month, Ripple has received unexpected backup on this issue from the Paradigm Operations Amicus Brief. Paradigm is an investment company, but in its brief, it cites to the work of one of its law firms which actually did something quite amazing. It must have taken a year or two for them to do it, but they reviewed 266 legal decisions related to securities violations. And in their brief on page two, it states, quote, a comprehensive analysis of federal and appellate law reveals that no authority exists to support the SEC's attempt to transmute the Howey analysis of an investment contract transaction into a conclusion about the underlying asset. In every application of Howard, I'll just skip through this part. He basically says they looked at 266 cases about security laws, and there is no legal precedent for what the SEC is doing. Between it. The evidence is clear in the Ripple case that there is no ongoing legal relationship between Ripple and XRP purchasers. There's just none. And the SEC has, a fail, has failed to address that problem. In fact, one of, the SEC, one of the cases that the SEC relied on in its reply brief cited to a case called Davis v. Rio Rancho Estates. And in that case, the court actually held that, quote, there was no management contract between plaintiff and defendants, nor were defendants obligated by the purchase agreement to perform any such services. And in the absence of a common enterprise between the parties, the expectation of a profit on resale is insufficient to transform what is essentially a sale of real property into the sale of an investment contract, close quote. So what that tells us is if the Howey company today was to sell the exact same orange groves that it did back in the 30s without any post-sale obligations to the purchasers, Howey would have won that case. In fact, Howey probably wouldn't have even been sued in the first place. And there's no- So you heard it there first. The most likely outcome for this lawsuit is summary judgment. And if you've been following the lawsuit, you know that is what Ripple has been looking for this entire time. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, if you want 12 free stocks valued up to $41, sign up with Webull, deposit a penny, and you can get free stocks valued up to $15,000. Typically, you'll just get $40 to $300, but you can get lucky and get more, all just for signing up and depositing a penny. Thank you guys for watching. The link to Webull is in the video description below. As always, take care of yourselves, take care of your families. Until next time.